Hi, I'm your host, Justine Oxsoy, and this is The Pleasurehood Podcast, a podcast where we explore what it means to be a mother, a leader, and an all-around badass from a place of pleasure, empowerment, and turn-on. I am here to revolutionize how humans experience sex, pleasure, and motherhood by normalizing self-care, normalizing mothers having desires, and normalizing mothers as sensual and sexual beings. Quick side note, you don't have to be a mother in order to listen to this podcast. Though I create my work with mothers in mind, this conversation is truly for everyone. I believe that pleasure is one of many paths of healing, and I'm here to highlight how to walk that path, no matter who you are. It is my deepest desire that wherever you find yourself on this amazing journey we call life, you can experience your power, your turn on, and of course, orgasmic pleasure. Welcome, Radiant One, to another episode of the Pleasurehood Podcast. Today, I want to talk about a common question I have received from clients, friends, and even strangers who know that I'm a sex love relationship coach, a certified sex love and relationship coach. And it's something that is very important to all of us, especially those who are in long-term relationships. And that question is, how do I maintain passion inside of my long-term relationship or marriage? This is something that many of us wonder about when we've been in a relationship for a very long time and that sizzle, that heat and desire seems to wane year after year. This topic can be a very heavy topic for some people because it's one that can come with a lot of shame or guilt when people think that they're not having enough sex in their relationship or think because they've been with someone for a really long time that having sex should be easy or even having a conversation about sex should come naturally. But that's usually not the case. These conversations can be really hard to have. They're difficult for me even. And I have so many tools that allow me to have powerful conversations around sex and relationships. And I still get choked up when talking about this with my husband of almost 14 years. So if you're currently feeling, I'm not having the sexual experience that I actually want to have, How do I begin to talk about this with my partner? I'm ready to up-level my sexual experience with my partner. I want to have more sex with my partner. If you are a person who is feeling like you really desire to transform your intimate relationship with your significant other, then this episode is for you. I'm going to share four things that really allowed me to understand First of all, what I wanted sexually, how to communicate those desires with my partner, and how to enroll them into the possibility of up-leveling our sexual relationship. So I just want to say there is no shame whatsoever. And this is a shameless conversation about sex and relationships. It is something that can be very complicated and something that can feel really hard, but it is my intention to break it down in a way that will leave you feeling like you have the the tools to have a powerful conversation with your significant other around sex, intimacy, and your relationship. So yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. (music) 
So I used to be really ashamed of being in a sexless marriage and or really just a marriage that where I felt like we weren't having enough sex. And I made myself feel so wrong and very responsible for the sex that was being had in my relationship or not being had, I should say. I would always bring it up to my husband in a way that was digestible for the both of us. Very often, I would like end up laughing it off and pretending it wasn't that big of a deal, even though deep down inside, I was kind of hurting around this particular subject in our relationship. And over time, I found myself shutting down, feeling numb, and really withdrawn from my body, my sensuality, and my eros, which says a lot because I've always been a sensual person. So to go from like pure sex to complete sexual shutdown put me in a state of misery I had never experienced. And at some point, I just found myself in a very dark place. And I wasn't sure what would bring me back to life. I believed that my husband was the source of my unhappiness, to be completely honest with you. But on one fateful day, It was actually up to me to bring myself back to life sexually and sensually. And I could no longer depend on him or a relationship to breathe life back into my body, back into my sexuality, and most of all, back into my pussy. And this was daunting because I was always told that I had to depend on a man to make me happy. I had to depend on a man to make me satisfied. So it was this new concept that it was actually me. It was my responsibility to make myself satisfied, to make myself happy. And it kind of got me into like exploration mode. And I started to explore like if I went deep into my body my sexuality, and my sensuality, would I begin to come back online? Would I begin to turn on again? And would I come back home to myself? And honestly, I did. I truly did once I started to take full responsibility for my sexual experiences. I began to find my turn on. I realized I was the source of my turn on and not my husband or any man or any other person for that matter. And I began to let him into what I was discovering about my body, what felt good, what didn't. And as I cultivated safety and the utmost love and respect for my body and sexuality, I was able to tell him how I wanted to be touched, how I wanted to be loved, and how I wanted to have sex. To my surprise, he was eager to learn and please. He wanted me to be satisfied. He wanted me to be sexually fulfilled. He just didn't know how to. But once I began to show him the way, our love for one another began to change and transform. We were able to heal our connection to ourselves, to one another, and bring it into the realm that I didn't know was even possible. Now, with all of that said, it is still a work in progress. But one, where we're excited to actually show up and do the work. And also, honestly, it gives space for hiccups. And it also gives space for whatever sexual season that you're in, which I talk about more about in a little bit. And once I began to use sex as a path to connect to myself and as a way to commune with myself and a way to love myself fully, once my orgasm was a way to nourish my body and my soul, 
Once my body became a sanctuary for my pleasure and my arrows, my life transformed. My relationship transformed. And my love for myself and my husband transformed. So what were the three things that helped me navigate my sexuality, my turn on, and really created space for me to heal my relationship to my sexual expression? Well, the first thing that supported me was knowing what sexual season I was in. I have done a podcast episode on sexual seasons and cycles. I will share a link to that episode in the show notes so you can have a better understanding of what it means to be in a sexual season or cycle and also understand what sexual season and cycle you are currently in. Now, there are four and they go along with the seasons in nature, that we see in nature, because everything is cyclical, even though us humans do not live that way, everything around us in nature and even within us has seasons and is cyclical. So we have our fall season in a sexual season and cycle where it's more of a quieter time. It's more of preparing for winter and going within. It's about being cozy. And maybe during this time, there are certain sexual things that you're not really interested in doing. And it's more about nourishing and nurturing your sexual soul and your sensual soul. Then you have winter. And winter allows you to like really slow down, go inside, be with yourself, maybe be with your partner in a way that is a little bit more cozy, a little bit more uh, supple and sensual and feels like there might not be a lot of fire there, but there might be a lot of nourishment there that feels just really, really good to your body and your nervous system. Then there is spring and spring is all about like that stepping into the the, the sensual part of your body and you start to feel your body kind of warm up a little bit and you're not quite ready to like fully be sexually expressed, but you know that your body is preparing for a sexual awakening where you go into summer and just everything is hot and you want to be touched and you want to be sexed all over. You want to have sex with yourself. You want to have sex with your partner and you just feel super playful and open to having more fun and playful sexual experiences. So these are very, very light examples and explanations of what sexual seasons and cycles are. So I definitely, definitely encourage you to go listen to that episode where I go deeper into sexual seasons and cycles. Now, the next thing that really supported me was understanding my body and what brings it pleasure. This is a really big one. Because once I start to explore what actually physically, sensationally turned my body on, and I really understood my body from, oh, I love it when I, I'm touched in this way, or I hate it when I'm touched in this way, I began to understand where I had probably taken on past lovers or sexual experiences and internalized it and thought that I actually liked certain things that I engaged in. And maybe at that time I did. But what I began to realize was like, oh, actually, no, that wasn't me. That was something that they enjoyed. I don't think I really enjoyed that. But this is what I enjoy. This is what I like. And once you really understand what brings you pleasure and what turns your body on 
and you get to understand it from like a embodied place, you get to share that with your partner and it cuts so many things out or experiences where you're like, oh, I really don't like this, but I'm just going to suffer through it. How can you truly enjoy a sexual experience if you're like suffering through it? And especially in a long-term relationship, think about all the sex that you've had with your partner all these years that you actually didn't like or didn't want to have. And no shame, no blame whatsoever. It's just that you didn't understand the language of your body and you didn't have the language to articulate it to your partner. So taking the time to explore your body, to self-pleasure, to masturbate, to have sensual play with yourself, to take the time out to actually touch every part and orifice of your body to know like, oh, actually, I like it when my pussy is touched in this way. Or, ooh, I like it when my thigh is like touched really slow. Or I like it when my arms are grabbed and I like a lot of pressure on my body or I like soft, sensual touch. These are things that you can do for yourself and understand for yourself. So when the time comes to share that with your partner, you can do so with confidence and you can do so with like, like with a lot of compassion that you didn't have the understanding and you didn't have the language to share with them. But now that you do, you're excited to to show them what is possible when you are touched in a way that feels good and pleasurable to you. And also encourage your partner to do the same for themselves. This is not all about you and what you like. Encourage your partner to explore their bodies as well. Explore and learn what they like, what they don't like, and have an open conversation about it. Talk about it beforehand, before you start introducing that into the bedroom so that you can be on the same page. And then the next thing, the very last thing that supported me was, what do I desire? Like, what do I actually desire? And I remember I worked on a desire list with a coach I had worked with like back in 2019. And they had me write down all the sexual fantasies, desires I had, Even if it was something I was just curious about and wasn't actually sure I would want to experience that, I wrote it down in a list and I probably had 50 things. And a lot of things really surprised me a lot where I was like, oh, wow, I would try that maybe, maybe once. Ooh, okay. Um, (laughs) And maybe one day I'll share that list. I don't know. It's a little intimate, but it really just ran the gamut of so many different sexual expressions and experiences. And then I highlighted the ones that felt like really, really true, like a huge yes, I want to experience that. And I didn't do anything with it right away. I just highlighted it, made a list of the things I was a big yes to, and put it in my pocket for later. Sometimes I might bring it out, revise it. Sometimes I'll share it with my husband and sometimes I don't. Sometimes I don't want to talk about it. Sometimes it's just for me. But just understanding what it is I sexually desire, what sexually turns me on and what I like or would maybe like to try was really powerful for me because it began to create a more dynamic look at what my sexual expression actually was instead of running off an old paradigm and belief around what I thought I liked sexually. And what I like sexually has changed, right? I'm a 38-year-old woman who has been with the same person for the past 14 years, and we have a child together We've moved so many times. Our life has gone through so many life transformations. And who I am, what I like, has significantly changed from when I was 18 
19 and 20 years old. And I feel like that is something on like a sidebar that I'd like to touch on is who you were sexually even five years ago, even one year ago is completely different. And that is okay because we have different life experiences. We have different life circumstances that might change how we feel sexually and how we want to experience sex and sensuality. And I feel like there's this false narrative in society that we are constantly supposed to be turned on having sex all the fucking time. And that is not the case because our lives are constantly changing and moving and sometimes we have more stress where you sex is the last thing that is on your mind being sexually expressed is the last thing on your mind sometimes we have all the time in the world and life is good and we feel open and expanded and we want to share that with our partner by way of sexual connection And that's great too. But I think that goes back to like the first step of understanding what sexual season and cycle you are and being really, really, really honest about it. Because the more honest conversations we have with ourselves about our sexual expression, about what we desire sexually, about what brings our bodies joy and pleasure we can have a more open and honest conversation with our partners. Which brings me to how do... So you have all this information. You have all the, you know, what sexual season you're you're in. You're understanding like what brings your body joy and pleasure. You understand what you desire. So how do we take all this information and have a powerful conversation with our partner. So before you can invite your partner into your world of sexual expansion, you have to be clear about what it is you actually want to invite them into. All right, if that makes sense. Going back to my desire list, I had 50 different types of desires, fantasies, sexual scenarios that I was curious, interested in, a yes to, a maybe to. And I had to think to myself, hmm, is this something I actually want to invite my husband into? And sometimes it was a yes, sometimes it was a no, but I had to get super clear about that for myself before I could even sit down and begin to have a conversation about what it is I like, what turns me on, what brings me pleasure. And I feel like a lot of times we get super excited about all the findings that we have and we want to bum rush our partner and be like, I can't wait to share with you like what sexual season I'm in and I can't wait to share with you like what turns my body on and what I desire and what fantasies I want. And it can feel kind of startling to them, right? Because you've been doing all of this amazing sexual expansion work on your own that it can be kind of like, wait, what? You've been doing this? (laughs) And now you want to invite me into this? And it can create a, it could create a a heaviness or a super serious tone right away, or they could become defensive of like, has our sex not been good or not good enough? And in my personal experience, I've found, I've entered into these conversations focused on what the conversation is going to look like or sound like, or expectation of what my husband should say or what he should do. And I never really paid attention to the energy that I wanted to bring into the conversation or the transmission of that energy that I wanted to to have and share with my husband. So the two things that 
really supported me when having conversations around sex and intimacy was first clarity. Like I said, what am I inviting them into? What do I want to share with my partner about our sex life? That will leave us both feeling excited about the possibility of up-leveling our sensual and sexual connection. And how, like, what kind of energy do I want to share this? Do I want to have this conversation in? Like, what is the energy? What is the vibe that I'm bringing to this conversation? Is it a fun and playful vibe, a sensual vibe? Is it a seductive vibe, like a seductive invitation? So I think that is really important to be clear on before even saying, hey, I want to have a conversation with you. And second, how do I want to feel when I have this conversation? And then I usually do like a little practice that will allow me to turn myself on. So when I have a conversation that could be difficult at the beginning, I'm at least feeling really good in my body. And when I feel good in my body, it helps me release some of the nerves that I might have entering into a serious conversation like this. And a little way I would turn myself on or a little way that I turn myself on before a serious conversation is I do hip circles to a song that like just is really sexy and sensual or I'll take three deep breaths in through my nose, out through my mouth with my my hand on my heart or one hand on my belly, one hand on my heart. And I will just really feel into the energy that I want to bring to this conversation. So there's those are just two examples of things that I do before having a conversation like this. And I'm not going to do it in this podcast, but there is a very special meditation and practice that I created to help individuals navigate these important conversations around sex and intimacy with their partner. I've led many individuals through this process, and so many of them have had a breakthrough that allowed them to reconnect with their inner sexual knowing. And when you reconnect with your sexual knowing, you begin to understand who you want to be as a sexual and sensual being. And that is power. Because when you know what you desire in your sexuality, the erotic world becomes your oyster. So I've decided to share that meditation and practice with you. The link to it is in the show notes. So it is there for you as a way to support you and understanding, first of all, what sexual season you're in, what brings your body pleasure, and what do you actually desire sexually? And then there is a whole part on how to communicate that with your partner. That is also a part of the practice that I share with you. So I know I have said a lot, and I'm going to allow you to like marinate and come to your own conclusion. But before I end this episode, I really want you to know that wherever you currently are in your own personal sexual journey and really trying to understand like who you are as a sexual being, it is okay wherever you are. You could be at the beginning, the middle. It's a never ending journey because like I said, it's always changing and transforming depending on where you are in your life. But I first and foremost want you to show yourself a lot of love and compassion because it's a lot to realize like, oh, I want more, period. I want more. I want to experience more. And I feel like a lot of women are shamed for that. And we're basically told like we should be happy with what we have and when we're not we're seen as like being greedy or being selfish or wanting too much. But if you want more fulfilling, 
intimacy, sexual expression, sensual expression, and you want to be fully embodied in that expression, then kudos and brava to you. I'm so here for it. And I'm so here to be your cheerleader and to support you through that process because it can be a lot. It can be a fucking lot. And that is okay. But it's a journey that opens up so many doors. And it's a journey that creates so many opportunities for you to step into who you truly are. And that can be really scary. So I've done it. I have done it. And believe you me, it has changed and transformed my life in ways I didn't even know was possible. And I'm so grateful. So you've got this. No matter what, you've got this. And I want you to know that. I truly, truly do. And so enjoy the meditation and practice. Like I said, it's in the show notes. So if you were, if you're listening to this and you're like, I don't even know where to start, start there. Start there. And as always, I want to hear what comes up for you. I want to hear if you liked the meditation and practice, if it didn't resonate, what you learned, share with me. Feel free to drop into my DMs at Justine Oxoy on my Instagram or even in the YouTube comments below. So anyway, enjoy and sending you so much love. And until next time. Thank you for joining another episode of the Pleasurehood Podcast. Catch new episodes every other week on Spotify, YouTube, and Apple Podcasts. The Pleasurehood Podcast is now on Good Pods. And if you're not familiar with Good Pods, it's a podcast-centric social network app where you can follow friends, influencers, and of course, other podcasters to see which shows and episodes they're listening to and engage with them. Join me on Good Pods subscribe, and let's stay connected. For more of my musings on pleasure, motherhood, power, and sex, head over to Instagram and follow me at Justine Oxoy or pleasure.hood. And if you're ready to take your pleasurehood game to the next level, sign up for my newsletter where you'll receive words of love, encouragement, and support as you take your pleasure practice a little deeper. You can sign up in the show notes. And that's all for now, Radiant Ones. I can't wait to go deeper with you on this path we call pleasure. Until next time, stay wild, sexy, and free.